See the brush tumble towards the screen on the x-axis. Remember the brush is rotating on the screen's x-axis. Now we'll turn the brush button on and preview. This time the brush spins around its own x-axis. This idea is the same for all rotations, though it isn't always easy to predict what a complex set of rotations will look like. You'll probably find that most of your moves can be accomplished with rotations around only one axis at a time. If you have found this last example to be confusing, you should review the chapter on perspective in your D-Paint 3 manual. There you will find more information on the differences between screen and brush angles. This might help you understand how the move requester uses them. We've now worked our way down to the go back button. We'll show you the results of two different move paths, one without using go back and another with go back. After we clear all the frames and reset the perspective to its original orientation, we position the brush at the bottom of the screen and stamp it down. Next, display the move requester and clear the edit fields. Set the Y distance to 200 and the Z distance to 400, then draw. We're now creating the first part of the brush movement. The second part will continue from where the brush ended. In the move requester, we'll set the X distance to 800, leave the Y distance at 200, and set the Z distance to 0, then draw. Let's play this little animation back. 4 is the keyboard equivalent for play animation. In this animation, the brush moves into the distance and upward, and then shoots off the screen diagonally. Because we did not use go back, the second part of the movement follows the end of the first part. Let's stop and try it again using the same settings, but we'll click go back before drawing the second part of the animation. We need to clear the frames and reset the perspective again. Let's try to stamp the brush down just about where it was before. We'll move the brush for its first segment using the same settings as before. When we go back to the move requester, we click go back to reposition the brush to the same place that we had stamped it down. Once again, we'll set the X to 800, leave the Y at 200, and set Z to 0. Now let's draw. This time we see that the animation shows the title splitting into two, with one title moving into the distance and upward, and the other moving diagonally to the right and off the screen. The Ease Out and Ease In edit fields let you specify a number of frames over which you want the brush to accelerate or decelerate. This lets you make the brush movement smooth at the beginning and ending points. Also, some effects require gradual acceleration and deceleration to be realistic. A bouncing ball is a good example of how this feature works. In the process, we'll also use the Come To option. Let's clear all the frames. Now, draw a small filled circle and pick it up as a brush. On frame 20, stamp the ball down near the bottom of the screen. In the Move Requester, click Clear and enter negative 170 for the Y distance, telling D-Paint we want the brush to move downward. Set Ease Out to 20, and make sure that the count is also 20, to specify a gradual speed increase over 20 frames. Next, we'll select the Come To option, so that the movement ends on the frame that we stamped our brush on. Let's see how it looks. We play it back in ping pong mode from the anim menu, or press the key equivalent, 6. Not bad. What remains in the move requester are the trails and fill functions. They are best explained in the putting it all together section of this video. This might be a good place for you to positate and experiment with some of these techniques yourself. So far we've shown you how to create animation by painting on a series of frames. D-Paint also lets you create a brush that animates. The brush changes while you paint, and depending on whether or not the frame changes, you create either animation or interesting effects. To begin, let's create a simple animation that we can easily pick up as a brush. We'll want to use the default palette and have 20 blank frames for our animation. Now let's make a small gradient filled circle and pick it up as a brush. Then we'll stamp it down and bring up the move requester. 360 degrees of Z rotation will give us an animation that looks a bit like a spinning planet. Now we'll step to frame 1 and choose Anim Brush Pickup from the Anim menu. This gives us a large crosshair just like the one we use to pick up standard brushes, but in this case it picks up from all of the frames. 
We see each of the frames flip as the area is picked up. Now we have an anim brush. Another way to pick up an anim brush is to hold down the left Amiga or Commodore key when you use the normal brush pickup tool. Now let's clear those frames. This time we'll step through the frames as we paint using the left Amiga or Commodore key. This is anim painting with an anim brush. If we play this back, it looks sort of like balls rolling across the screen. When you combine anim brushes into large animations, you'll find that occasionally you may want to change the rate or direction which the anim brush plays. For example, let's have our little planet spin in the opposite direction. This can be accomplished using the anim brush settings option from the anim menu. Just click the reverse button. Now our little planet spins in the opposite direction as we paint. While we're at it, let's try the yo-yo direction. Notice how the brush now spins back and forth. The duration field in the anim brush settings requester lets you specify how many stamps of the anim brush are used to complete its cycle. If the duration number is larger than the number of cells, the brush seems to move more slowly. If the duration number is smaller than the number of cells, the brush seems to move faster. Let's try painting normally with an anim brush and then paint with a duration set higher. This time we'll use an anim brush from the D-Paint animation disc. We do this through the anim brush load item in the anim menu. Here's one bird. This should work just fine. We need to set the direction so that the bird is flying properly. Now set the background color to light blue and clear all the frames. We'll stamp the bird in the middle of the screen and use the move requester. Clear the old settings. We'll have the bird fly negative 100 in the X distance and negative 100 Y distance and draw. Our bird is flying outward from the middle of the screen towards the left edge. Now let's paint another bird that flaps more slowly. We'll go back into the anim brush settings and set the duration to 24 and the current frame to 1. Okay, let's get back to frame 1 and bring up the move requester again. We'll use go back to get our bird to the starting point. Then, so this bird has a different path, we'll set his X direction to positive 100 and leave everything else the same. As expected, our bird is being drawn to the right. As we play the animation, compare the flapping of the bird's wings. If we step through the frames of the animation one at a time, we can see that the bird on the right takes two frames before changing the wing position, while the bird on the left moves its wings on every frame. Now we've covered all the basics of D-Paint 3's animation capabilities. You might want to load the animations on your D-Paint 3 animation disc and play them, or create some of your own. Really the hardest part of D-Paint 3 was just the whole task of getting the ability to edit a compressed anim, where every time you edit the compressed anim and step to the next page, the program has to go in and re-compute the compression of that page relative to the previous page and, and the following page and have that work fast enough that you can actually get the feeling of painting in an animation. I also think that anim brushes, because of the fact that you not only can animate with them, you can also paint in a picture with them, are going to find a lot of uses that uh, you wouldn't anticipate. I think it's probably the thing I'm most proud of in the program because it was hard to do, yet it really enables people to to make use of machines that don't have much memory and still do animations.